Hi folks and thanks for joining me. It's been some time now since I've published a new video. In addition, I'm way behind on responding to uh, comments, so please accept my apologies for my uh, lack of response. I'll try to get caught back up here in the next uh, week as uh, time permits. A little project that I built over the winter months, I never had an opportunity to uh, document or share, so I thought I would take a moment and do so for those purists out there that want to look for a method without an oscilloscope or other means to uh, indicate or identify the outside foil of a capacitor. Um, I put this circuit together using Arduino, so it seems to work uh, pretty well. We'll demo it again here in live action. I'll show you guys how it works in addition to uh, a little headlines or highlights from the sketch itself and the uh, BOM that I'm previewing here. Thanks for viewing. As I mentioned, it's a very simple circuit. You have your preamplifier, you have your relay driver, you have your signal source, that being that SI5351 to generate a square wave or somewhat of a distorted square wave. And of course the OLED in this case to keep things uh, compact. To display the information and I'm just leveraging a nano uh, for this project as well. We'll start out here discussing the SI5351. Again, it's a square wave generator. I'm going to take that signal. You can see C3 off of uh, output 0. And I'm pushing that over to a step-up audio transformer to increase the amplitude of the uh, carrier level itself. That's actually going over to a uh, binder clip. If you look at the uh, picture here of my prototype build, you'll see how that's configured. So again, you can see the binder clip itself is around the uh, capacitor under test and that has the 200 kilohertz signal in my case from the uh, SI5351. And the capacitor itself is tied back to the two posts, the red and black. And of course we're going to alternate the uh, relay, the double pole, double throw relay to uh, measure the uh, signal or the amplitude of the signal itself that we're receiving off of the uh, capacitor. And in my build, the one with the highest level and amplitude would indicate the uh, outside foil side of the uh, capacitor or shielded side of the capacitor. And you can see we're taking advantage of the double pole, double throw relay that I'm controlling through Arduino to reposition the uh, test capacitor, reversing the leads, that is. So again, the lead on the capacitor that has the highest amplitude signal from the signal source would be the outside foil. That's where the uh, preamplifier comes in. Again, you can see I'm using a simple Q1 being the BC547C with a lot of gain in the way it's configured. And then again, the uh, diodes, germanium diodes off of that side act as a rectifier to convert the uh, AC signal that we're receiving back into a, a DC voltage. Capacitor C2 and it levels that off. Again, it's not a high enough value. I think it's 0.47 microfarads. So we're not uh, storing that level over a period of time. So it responds fairly quickly to changes. And then D3, a Zener diode rated at 5.1 volts, is placed there in a reverse bias mode to uh, protect the uh, analog input not to exceed uh, 5 volts should that happen. And up next you can see the relay driver Q2 just uh, taking advantage of the 2N3904 NPN transistor. 
That's to uh, minimize the uh, current flow back to the I.O. port, that being D2, where we're changing the logic every four seconds from zero to five volts. So Q2 just acts as a simple switch, and the current flow back to uh, D2 is only around, I think, three to four milliamps of current versus around 40 milliamps if I were to hook the uh, relay up directly, which would stress the uh, Arduino board. You'll also notice in this build there's not a standalone 5 volt DC power supply. I'm just using a regulated power supply with a mini USB connector and powering the uh, Nano directly. So let's look at a couple screenshots of the sketch real quick. I'll uh, highlight a few things and then we'll actually demo the unit before concluding the video. A quick disclaimer for those that uh, choose to build and use the circuit. Again, it seems to be accurate, but you may want to test it against your known procedure. A couple things to call out here I think that are noteworthy. The uh, libraries that I'm using, the EtherKit SI5351 by Jason Mildrum, it's a simple one to use. Just a few lines of code to uh, drive the uh, SI5351 square wave generator. And of course, I'm leveraging the uh, Adafruit for the uh, OLED display. If you reference the lower part of the code sheet, you'll notice the A0 code. I've used this before. Again, I'm going to sample the input 200 times and capture that data and take the average of the analog read voltage for those particular samples. And that just minimizes the amount of fluctuations that uh, you would see on the display itself. It kind of level sets things. So I wanted to point that out. That number seemed to work uh, really well for this particular build. And as I alluded to earlier, just a few lines of code to control the uh, SI5351. Uh, you can see I'm only using output uh, zero. The other two ports are turned off. So they can be enabled if you would choose to uh, modify the circuit design. You can see my uh, test frequency there of uh, 200 kilohertz, and uh, that's how that has to be input to achieve that particular output. And then you can see we just move down into the uh, OLED code itself, which is uh, very common. One snippet of code that I used that works really well by David uh, Mellis, blink without delay, modified to control the relay itself, that is to switch the uh, relay every uh, four seconds. So we're switching the uh, capacitor around every four seconds and reading that information you can see on the OLED itself to indicate the uh, black connection point or red connection point with the highest amplitude signal. So that's how I'm achieving that by just using uh, one analog input source. A couple lines of code that you may have to tweak for calibration. That would be the voltages on the OLED display. Again, the data that you would see on the serial port itself would be raw data not calibrated, but we can tweak what we see on the OLED by following a, a simple calibration process. I'll describe uh, two methods and procedures that you might want to consider if you uh, build the circuit. Let's take a look at that now. We get the unit plugged in here and uh, we'll take a look at the uh, calibration process. Okay, you probably can't see the display well from this view but you'll notice I have the uh, meter hooked up and I have the uh, plus lead on the uh, cathode side of uh, D3, that Zener diode, and this is my uh, ground connection here. And I'm just reading, again, the uh, DC voltage. And you can see the uh, DC voltage that's being, or the AC voltage that's being rectified constantly change is the uh, relay itself is energized every four seconds that I alluded to earlier. 
So if we go into, uh, on my meter, I'll just go into min max. We'll look at the max voltage first. Let that settle in. And if we go to the uh, min voltage, again, I'm using a multiplier in the code of times 1000 just to make the uh, display number higher. But you can change the uh, code or the multiplier to make the display itself closer match what you're reading here on your analog voltage. So that's what I've done. And I've actually done it a couple different ways. Using a capacitor in the circuit as you see here. Or removing the capacitor and taking my input signal and going to the uh, black connection point and capturing that data and then moving over to the uh, red side and capturing that data and again changing the uh, multiplier to closer measure the uh, voltage that's being recorded here. Again you can see the voltage changing, the DC voltage changing that would be the ingress that we're receiving, that 200 kilohertz signal off of the binder clip around the uh, capacitor as we alternate between the uh, red and black uh, post. And you can see the voltage uh, change. Again, the one with the highest DC voltage would indicate the uh, outside foil and the least amount uh, being just the opposite. So let me move the meter out of the way. OLEDs just don't want to show up well on camera. So hopefully you guys can see that. But uh, let me just remove the uh, input signal source here to the binder clip. And I'll remove the uh, capacitor here. I'm actually going to reverse it. You can see I already have this side marked as my outside foil. So the highest amplitude signal here should follow the uh, black side now. Again, we're changing everything every four seconds and you can see the highest amplitude now resides on this terminal. Let me see if I can zoom in here. Okay, and I'll flip that around again. Let it go through a couple rotations. Again, we're taking those uh, 100 samples. And as it updates, you should see it now change, and indeed it did. You can see black has our least amount of signal, red has our highest signal, so red being the outside foil. So that's how the uh, circuit works. I'll do a few more photos here of the uh, circuit board, the build. Again, not the best layout. And if I had it to do over, I would make some changes by making sure my uh, relay itself is in the uh, direct center of the two post, just to keep the uh, lead links from the relay back to the post exactly the same or equal. And of course, probably orient things uh, in a different direction so the uh, OLED itself fits on the board itself and doesn't overhang. But just a uh, kind of a fun project to do this winter. More of a uh, proof of concept to see if it would actually uh, work. And it uh, does work well. Appreciate you guys uh, watching. Everyone out there, uh, take care and stay well.